Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain Fourier transform of cosine signal. After deriving Fourier transform of cosine signal, I will explain few interesting fundamentals based on Fourier transform of cosine signal. So first of all, let me explain how cosine signal is given to you. You can observe here we have been given with sinusoidal signal and we need to understand whether this signal is cosine or sine. See this signal is starting from maximum amplitude means this is cosine signal. One should know cosine signal is even signal. So with respect to t is equals to 0, this signal is even signal means this is cosine signal. See sine signal that will start from t is equals to 0 over here. So sine signal is odd signal. Here we have been given with signal that is starting from maximum amplitude that is even with respect to t is equals to 0 that's why this is cosine signal right so here we have cosine signal x of t that is having amplitude a let us say this cosine signal is omega naught t so what is omega naught that one can understand from one cycle here one cycle duration that is 1 by f naught so one should know omega naught that is 2 pi by t. So here we have t that is 1 by f naught. So omega naught is 2 pi f naught. So you can say x of t that is a cos of 2 pi f naught t. Right. So that is how we have signal in terms of omega naught and in terms of frequency f naught. Now I will derive Fourier transform with respect to this signal omega naught. So Fourier transform x of omega that is limit is having range from minus infinite to plus infinite x of t e to the power minus j omega t dt. Now we need to substitute x of t. See x of t that is a cos of omega naught t. Let me substitute that over here and now I will simplify this integration. See here A is constant that one can take outside and we can represent this cos of omega naught t in form of exponential function. See cos of omega naught t that will be e to the power j omega naught t plus e to the power minus j omega naught t divided by 2 into e to the power minus j omega t dt. Now you can take this half outside. So here we will be having a by 2 and in integration we will be having e to the power j omega naught t into e to the power minus j omega t. So if you take minus j out then we'll be having omega minus omega naught into t and along with this we have e to the power minus j omega naught t and e to the power minus j omega t so if you take minus j common then omega plus omega naught that we will be having right now you need to understand this integration see here we have a integration of exponential function and limit is there from minus infinite to plus infinite. So one should remember this as if you have integration of exponential function as per e to the power minus j omega minus omega naught t then this integration that will be 2 pi into impulse function with respect to frequency omega minus omega naught. And here we have exponential function so 2 pi into impulse function with respect to omega plus omega naught right and if you further simplify this then this 2 is getting cancelled so we will be having a pi del of omega minus omega naught plus a pi del of omega plus omega naught this is what we have as per Fourier transform of x of omega right this is what we have as per Fourier transform of x of omega when I was solving this question in college at the time few students were saying 
that you have done wrong calculation. See, this is perfectly correct calculation. Here, we have x of omega and we are representing this impulse with respect to radian per second. See, omega is radian per second, right? And you are thinking like this is wrong. The reason is you might be considering frequency in terms of hertz. Hertz means per second. So if you calculate same calculation with respect to hertz, then you will be getting x of f. Then you will be getting x of f. And in case of x of f calculation, instead of omega, you will be having 2 pi f. Instead of omega naught, you will be having 2 pi f naught. Right. So in that situation, you don't need to multiply 2 pi. Means Fourier transform in terms of frequency f it will be a by 2 impulse function of f minus f naught plus a by 2 impulse function of f plus f naught. Right. If you have frequency in terms of radian per second, then you'll have to multiply 2 pi over here. If you have frequency as per hertz, then you don't need to multiply 2 pi. Right. That is what you need to consider when you talk about integration. Right. Now, let me explain this as per graph. So here I'll be plotting this frequency response, right? See here we are talking about frequency response. Frequency response could be there in terms of radian per second or it could be there in terms of hertz, right? So if it is there in terms of omega means radian per second, then at omega is equals to omega naught, we have impulse. So at omega is equals to omega naught, we have impulse and that impulse that is having magnitude a pi. So here we have impulse you can observe with magnitude a pi and at omega is equals to minus omega naught again we have impulse. So at omega is equals to minus omega naught we have impulse and that impulse is having magnitude a pi right and when you talk about Frequency in terms of hertz, when you talk about frequency in terms of hertz means per second, then here at f is equals to f naught, at f is equals to f naught, we have impulse with magnitude a by 2. So here we have magnitude a by 2 and at frequency f is equals to minus f naught, here we have impulse with magnitude a by 2, right. So that is how frequency response that is there in terms of radian per second and in terms of hertz. Here one more thing that you need to understand. See if you have sine function like here I have explained you cosine function right. But if you have sine function so in that case you will be observing this calculation where magnitude wise this impulse will remain as it is but this negative frequency impulse that will be having negative amplitude right that you just derive it by your own you will be getting that only so when you talk about sine function at that time this impulse will be having same magnitude with opposite polarity right so that is how sine function is having response here i have derived it for cosine function similarly one can derive it for sine function still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.